Hey guys, welcome back to. Oh, lock that up. Hey guys, Pretzelman945 here. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we have another review of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Um, so I finished watching this a week ago. And, um, this is, like, it's, like, been consistently rated, like, the one, number one or two, like, highest rated animes ever. Um, uh, sorry about this. I had to do, deal with something real quick. Um, anyway, as I was saying, um... Uh, this anime has been consistently, like, within the one and two best rated animes of all time. Um, and, so obviously very, very popular. And I had gotten countless recommendations to watch this, both from, like, reading... All, a ton of like websites about new animes for beginners to watch, and like several like uh, friends, coworkers, and uh, things like that recommend it to me. Um, and um, I I have to say, um, it absolutely lives up to the ratings that it's been consistently getting. I mean. This show is one of the best shows I've ever seen. It is my new number three favorite show. Um, which I realized probably completely like, um, what's the word? Um, outdates. I don't know if that's the right word or not. Um, retro. I I can't think of the right word, but it basically makes the current list I'm making irrelevant. But I don't really care because this show is just so absolutely incredible, and I loved it so much. Um, I mean. It, it was basically perfect in literally every way. Um, I mean, like, the the music and the openings were all really good. Um, and, uh, the, the music was absolutely incredible. Like, oh, I love the score. The score is so so incredibly good it's like it's emotional it's epic it's like also it also at times can be very like quiet and softly emotional um uh and 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 uh some some clear standout tunes here um requiem for the brigadier general um Lapis Philosophorum, that's a banger. Um, and then Lullaby of Resin. Uh, those three are my personal favorites from the soundtrack. My personal favorite opening is, again, none of the other openings even come close to matching how incredible that opening is. Um, and, um, and I mean that that is literally just one tiny aspect of this show. Um the uh the next thing that I think I would touch on is um uh the animation. The animation is gorgeous, like beautiful. Um, like, the, the, every single character design is stellar and feels extremely unique. Um, and particularly the designs of the homunculi, like, expertly demonstrate the particular, 
uh, sin that they represent, um, like special shout outs to, um, gluttonies, uh, lost character design, uh, uh, wrath and pride were also incredible. Uh, sloth, like, awesome, awesome character designs right there. Um, and animation was just really, really good. Um, which leads me to my next point, um, kind of like segueing from animation, the action. Wow. I mean, like, the fights in this show are on another level. Like, uh, I, I, I still say that Attack on Titan is pretty wide margin and overall better show in anime. But honestly, I think Brotherhood might have better fights. Like, 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 and I say that in, in the twofold way, like, as both, um, like, the action itself, and, and, like, the, and, like, the, the, the plot character development, like, like, the meaningfulness behind the fights, I honestly think it's better than Attack on Titan in that regard. Um, and that's just a realization that I've just come to just, while sitting here recording this video. Um but like um the 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 like the different alchemy abilities are friendly, unique and and they never feel like like the different types of alchemy that are used and as well as like um like like each time it's used it never necessarily feels repetitive. Which is kind of insane because there's a lot of different types of alchemy, and like basically from like basically from like the first like with with some exceptions like within the first like ten to fifteen episodes, we're literally introduced to every single character that is within the show. Um. So, like, the fact that none of the alchemy types feel, like, stale at all, or, like, or, like, the way that the alchemy is used is another, like, huge, like, positive I can give toward the action of this show. And, obviously, like, the action scenes are animated spectacularly. The different, like, effects of the alchemy and the way that those effects, like, in the lighting interact with fights is Austin. It's extremely engaging to watch, and it constantly keeps you on your toes. Um, I also feel like the balance of action to, like, exposition is perfect in this show. Like, it never feels like there is, like, like, for one thing, none of the episodes feel like filler at all. Um, which, th that would kind of have to make sense, considering it's, like, 64 episodes. Uh, it's only 64 episodes total, which is even more insane, honestly. Um. I lost my train of thought for a second. Um, which is even more insane that this was only 64 episodes. I'm, I'm kind of slowly transitioning to the pacing, but um it it, it feels like th this this show is like a perfect balance between um at, like, amazing action moments that really keep you on your toes and Absolutely spectacular, like, 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 great use of uh, exposition and character dialogue and development in meaningful ways. 
Um, which which kind of brings me to the overall idea of how the pacing is done in this show. And um I've got to say this show has like incomparably the best like pacing and understanding of what to include versus not and understanding what is crucial to the storytelling what isn't what what to mix into a particular episode so that it remains engaging also moves the plot along develops the characters and introduces something interesting and the biggest example that I love to reference for this is the very first episode, because it's the best first episode of any show I've ever seen. And for me, in particular, first episodes are crit or can be are can be critically important for like introducing the tone um of how a show is going to be. Like, like, for example, if you've watched the Rings of Power view that I made, um, that has one of the worst, if not the worst, first episodes I've ever seen in any show, ever. Uh, I won't go into it again, because that was a long video that I made specifically for that. So if you're kind of interested in why I hate the first episode of Rings of Power and why it's more important, I recommend watching that video. Um, but this, this just simply has the best first episode of anything I've ever seen, and maybe we'll ever see, because I don't know if anything I'm ever going to watch in the future is going to compare to the sheer mastery of the very first episode of this show. Um, like, we're talking, like, this first episode in quality already put it on par with, like, half the peak moments in Hunter Hunter for me. And like, if you've watched that review, you know how much I absolutely glowed about that show. I loved Hunter Hunter so much. I still do. But like, this is just, ah, oh, I, I, I can't really glow, glow about it anymore without really explaining. So I, <laughs> um, so right off the bat, when we're introduced, for like the first ten episodes, there's a there's there's a I love this detail. It's brilliant, by the way. It's just a very simple like one minute explanation on how alchemy works, and 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 I think that this plot device is a great way to introduce the idea of the show and how the mechanics of it in a very digestible and understandable way to ensure that a viewer is not lost in what is going on. Because uh, there's a lot of things that happen in this first episode. Um, basically, immediately, we are, we are, like, kicked in. We see the capital. We're introduced to the main characters, uh, Edward and Alphonse. Who are the Elwood brothers, and and Edward is the Full Metal Alchemist, who is a particular alchemist who is like pretty well renowned because he's kind of, he's the youngest state alchemist, and he's kind of a prod prodigy of sorts, I guess. Um, and immediately within this episode, we're introduced to this um, villain who I forget the name of because. Uh, he's only in that one episode, so it kind of, like, slipped from my mind a little bit. Um, but, um, the, the, uh, he uses ice alchemy, which is a unique kind of alchemy that's only seen in this first episode. Um, and immediately off the bat, we are introduced to one of the long-running jokes in the series, which is how everyone, well, or two of them actually. Number one, that everyone mistakes Alphonse as the Full Metal Alchemist uh, instead of Edward. And two, 
people making fun of how short Edward is, both of which are absolutely hilarious comedic devices that never feel like they get old. None of, none of the running jokes in this show ever get old. And that's another thing that I have to praise the show on as a whole. The humor in it is top-notch. Like, I mean, I made a, I made a, I made a review about Spy Family recently. It was very short, and and that's the and that's still the funniest anime I've ever seen, along with Demon Slayer. Both of those are very very funny. But like, Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood matches like it's it's not it's not quite as funny as Spy Family because obviously it's not that centric, but it's pretty damn close, which is incredible. Because it's not even the main focus of the anime. But it's still, like, incredibly hilarious. Like, like I say, like, like, like I just mentioned, none of the running jokes ever feel like they become stale in any way. And, um, and every, every, like, and, and like, it's just really funny. Like, like the writing is incredibly witty. And also, within each episode, it manages... This show manages to do something like I've never seen any episode do before. And this is why I was referencing the particular example of the first episode. Within this first episode, we are introduced to the characters. We learn who they are. We learn of their basic relationships. Uh, Long-running jokes are introduced that never feel like they get stale. We have extremely exciting action. We are given exposition about one of the most major plot ele um, elements in, in, in the story, which is the Shval War of Extermination, which is, of course, later explored in further episodes. But there's like a very basic, it's mentioned in a very basic rundown of it, such as it was a terrible genocide, is given. And second, we establish a unique villain that is only within this episode who has relatable motives and understandable trauma because he was a state alchemist who, um, who, like, refused at one point to, to do the monstrous things that his country ordered him to do, which at the same time uh, kind of tackles this underlying theme of, like, loyalty. And that's one, and that's one of the biggest themes of the whole show is loyalty. Um, and we get a little hint of that here. Um, and... And, and and simultaneously, they managed to make this villain character, like, understandable, which is just, inc it, 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 it's just mind-blowing. It's simply the only way I can describe it. The, the fact that they managed to do all of that within, like, a 25-minute episode, which also has incredibly engaging fight scenes that expertly demonstrate the use of alchemy. By the way, like, that's still in, in the first episode. And, like, and like they do, and obviously, I don't think that, that I, th I think the first episode in particular is, like, the complete peak in terms of how this kind of thing is used. But in general, like, like, just the general, uh, but just, like, the way this format is used in the beginning episodes, and, like, overall, this show's concept of pacing is simply unlike anything I've ever seen before, and it's done to such a masterful degree. Literally better than any other show I've ever seen. Um, and since I was kind of segueing, um, I really, the, the next thing, if you know anything about my channel, you know that I'm a huge villain, Scott. Villains for me 
I, I love watching villains. I, I love like being able to empathize with them just as much as in, in sometimes even more than a protagonist. And villains for me, just like music, are are a um, criteria that I tend to pay very specific attention to, um, where where it's applicable. And my God. This show absolutely excels at its villains. Like in in um like it's just below breaking bad, I think. Like like probably about that close in terms of like overall villain quality for me. And, um, and, and I, and, and this is a very multifaceted topic when I talk about this, um, because I feel like, um, obviously, I, the, the way I do things here is I go way more in depth about the characters and villains in a character's tier list, um, which is going to be coming out very soon, believe me, um, but, like, I, I just, I have to, I, I'm, I'm going to give a brief summary of each of the homunculi and explain their motives, um, because, like, it's just so incredibly centric to, um, the, the, like, how amazing the villains are in this show, but before that, before that, um, the uh the, the the thing that I want to tackle is like I, I I already mentioned it somewhat, but like the the way this this show manages to develop one episode villains is absolutely incredible. I mean like um uh in episode three um, I forget the name, the, 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 the Dr. Tucker guy that was, like, the father that turned his daughter and dog into a chimera because, like, of his, of this, like, like, pressure to live up to what is expected of him being a state alchemist. Let that sink in for a second. Because that's something that I would have expected to see a villain develop over, like, a couple episodes, a season, hell, maybe even an entire series that would be a concept. But, like, in one episode, it manages to happen. And also in that same episode, they simultaneously introduce one of the biggest and most invigorating uh, antagonists and overall characters of the entire show, and that is Scar, um, who is Inish Valen, who, like, claims to be, like, following the, with the will of God, which is already, like, an extremely unique idea, which, like, takes, which, like, ca causes, like, philosophical thinking about, like, what, like, the will of a god even is sometimes, and how it's carried out, which is insane. Um, and... I, I mean, like... <laughs> um... But at the same time, Scar uses a very unique type of alchemy, which is later explained masterfully through exposition, mind you, um, of how, like, his alchemy is unique, but until that's explained, it just looks awesome, and it creates this enigma for the viewer to, to continue, want to continue watching, and to want to understand what is going on. Um, which is just absolutely genius. And, um, and I think also the way that Scar's character develops is just in, in amazing. And obviously I'll talk more about that in the characters too. So I just wanted to quickly summarize Scar because he is one of the main villains of, of the show and one of the best. Now I'm going to get into the homunculi. 
So the main antagonists of this show are the seven homunculi, which represent the seven deadly sins of man, which are lust, envy, gluttony, uh, greed, pride, wrath, and sloth. I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of go through each one of these because I think each one of these masterfully, like, the way that these, the way that homunculi are displayed in uh, this show, like, it masterfully, it, it doesn't, it, it overall masterfully explores the flawed parts of the human psyche and, like, how those things, like, pervade to individual characters and how they apply to the flaws of real characters in the show and also real people. Um, so starting off, um, a personal, um, obviously, like, I have uh, personal favorites among the homunculi. Uh, uh, one of my personal favorites is um, uh, Gluttony. Because I think that, like, the fact that he's just kind of like this mindless creature that just wants to do nothing but eat people is, is a brilliant way of representing that particular sin. Uh, lust being a very attractive woman is also, like, the, the best possible way to carry that out um, because um, people lust after her, literally. So it's like a perfect visual representation of the character. Envy is, is like, perhaps one of the, is not one of my favorite homunculi, but he, I think he might be perhaps objectively one of the best represented because the way that he can change, like, forms, for example, um, is a brilliant demonstration of how he is envious of the forms that other people can eat. And, um... And I just think that's executed so brilliantly. And like and like the fact that he is very boastful is not even because it's pride, it's because he thinks everyone is envious of him, when in fact he is secretly envious of others, but his arrogance refuses to let him admit that. Obviously, like there, there's a, there there can be a lot of intermingling between these because that's just like the way it is. Um And, um, I think that Wrath is definitely one of the coolest homunculi as well, because Wrath is literally the visual representation of anger, and, like, and, like, carrying out a single motive for malignant reasons. And I think the fact that this was displayed in the form of Fear of Bradley, like, that First off, that twist is crazy, by the way. It goes so hard that Fear of Bradley is actually wrath. Um, that twist is absolutely crazy. Um, but also, I feel like, um, like, he, like his backstory and, and the representation of his character is incredibly interesting. And then we get to greed. Greed is another, like, one of the best represented, I think, um, because I feel like, um, he, uh, I feel like, uh, um, I feel like Greed in particular, he's kind of like this, like, loner, like, edgier kind of character, which is very unique from the other vibes, from the vibes that the other homunculi give off, which is, which when he's introduced is a very, like, and in general, he's kind of like a breath of fresh air in terms of, like, whenever the tropes, like, if they ever do get old at any point, like, 
when they, when they do happen to get old for whatever reason, greed always felt like for me while watching a breath of fresh air because he was very unique and charismatic and very, very different. Um, kind, kind of like the rebellious, edgy teenager type was always the vibe I got from Greed, and I, and I really, really enjoyed that part of his character. Um, but also, like, his realizations into, like, how he wants everything, but then realizing he actually has everything that he wanted, and, like, and, like, his desires and, and, and them being fulfilled, like, when he finally dies, it's, it's, a, it's an extremely, like, powerful, like, character arc that works extremely well. Um, the next one is Pride. And, to be completely honest, Pride is my favorite homunculus out of the whole show. Um, because, number one, the fact that he is Celine Bradley is completely nuts. And is, like, Ten times more unexpected than, than Fear of Bradley being wrath. Um, literally, like, the most unexpected thing imaginable. Um, because, like, his character is incredible because, although he's displayed as a little kid, um... He has this, like, mature air about him that makes him one of the most mature characters in the entire show. Like, mature, even more mature than, like, 90% of the adult characters, which is kind of crazy, honestly. Um, and also, the way he fights, and the fact that he is the most powerful and given the most, like, um, like, original aspects of the father. I think that's very, very interesting. And, uh... And, and I just... And, and, and also, like, the like his arrogance at, like, refusing to accept help and, like, love from his family. Family, I think that's such an interesting part of Pride's character in particular. Um, I also think that with the way he fights is absolutely awesome, and the fact that he like uh, needs light to fight, I think that's also super interesting. Um, and also the fact that like he can't go beyond his container because. It might not be easily realized at first, but there's actually a, a double nuance to that that I was able to pick up on it, and, and I very much like the fact that, like, very bad things can happen if your pride follows up too far, if you have so much arrogance, so much complacency, then you just, like, um, you, you just cannot function. And so I think that was a really unique way of uh, uh, illustrating that. Um, and the last one is a sloth. Uh, obviously one of the simpler ones, but I feel like still executed very well because of, like, the fact that he's very big and muscular and doesn't talk very much is, like, very good representation of, like, laziness and indulgence in things and just, like, how he meanly completes tasks at the whim of them. Um, the whim of the other homunculi in particular, I think it's very, very fascinating. And I really, really like it. Excuse me. Um, um, so, I also think that by far the best aspect of the homunculi um, is the way that 
all these, all these are like very noticeable. Like when you see the backstory of the homunculus and the flask, all these are like very noticeable aspects of the homunculus because the homunculus is is in in truth is essentially a flawed human. And the way that that number one, each of these aspects of like these homunculi are very unique, but also the way that they blend together is equally as fascinating and well executed, I think. Um and kind of overall, to summarize the entire section, the villains the, like, the quality of villains is, like, on a whole other level that, like, very, that, like, maybe only one or two other shows have, like, a better, like, I think Breaking Bad is the only show, I would say, that could be argued, that, 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 that uh, could be argued for a better, like, quality of villains um, just because that's longer and it has more time to develop the characters. Um, so, the next thing that I, the, and, and, and like, um, the last thing that I really, really want to hit on is the major themes and how those relate to uh, the uh, overall plot. Um, because they're they're like they're, 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 there are so many like dark and like extremely like profound themes that are commented on um within this. So I mean obviously starting out with like the episodal themes. Um Within within the first episode, as I already explained, there's this kind of like underlying uh, mo moral of like understanding like what it means to betray your country and like what what people do for loyalty, and this is one of the biggest themes that is explored a lot more. Um, and then the second episode alone, it's kind of explored like, um. Like, like, the pressures of living up to expectations and the stress of a workplace and just general details like that. And then in this episode, there's, like, a crazy priest, which, like, number one, comments on fanaticism, and two, Edward and Alphonse's no belief in God's comments on atheism. And three, the character of Rose in particular, like it's it's a an incredible common episodal commentary on the differences between science and religion and, and the results. Like how like how the entire town of Leori like out breaks out in uprises and protests and there's like a loyalist and like rebelling factions and it's just this masterful episodal commentary on um science versus religion and again it just once again like is another credit to what the fuck this show can do in one episode literally one episode. And, um, and so, now kind of tackling some of the bigger themes going on here, um, I would say there's probably the, the, there are three major, um, uh, well, Uh, I would say, like, out of, um, out of the three, out of, out of all the themes that are tackled and portrayed in the show, because there are a lot, um, a lot of the smaller ones tend to be more character or character specific, but I would say the three, like, largest ones are, um, the effect of racism, like, a commentary on racism and, like, 
and like the differences in acceptance and like living conditions between two different races. Um, and two, and all, and well, and also how, and also how that impacts like foreign relations and things like that. Um, and also, um, uh, West Virginia is over a second, sorry. Tends to have one in a record of all videos like this, but it's so worth it. Um, Um, the, the second of these big themes, I think, is um, sticking to your morals and like never giving and, and like never compromising your ideals. Um, and then the third and, and by far largest of these themes is the definition of loyalty and to what extent does that mean on 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 all different levels on a character level on on a race level on a uh, on on a countrywide level um so the first of these themes the the kind of like commentary on racism is primarily portrayed between like the difference in status between Amestrians and Ishvalans and the fact that Ishvalans are often living in poverty and Amestrians overall have a very negative view of them which kind of gives similar vibes to um the xenophobia that was briefly caused by like the 9-11 thing that that brief that that caused like conservative views to shift in, in negatively uh, to um, uh, like 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 the xenophobia of Muslims and in general like historically done with like immigration and things like that and I think that commentary on that is extremely well done and and like it, it is a very like visible element through a lot of the show because. A lot of uh, aspects, because because it, it's a very open thing, like Ishvan living in, in in poverty, them trying not to foster hate for each other, and a mystery looking down on Ishvalans and like being afraid of them, and like being very elitist and things like that. Uh, but then at the same time, being fearful of like an Ishvalan terrorist attack. Uh, uh, the second of these themes is, uh, or actually, so well, uh, the, the second part of the way that this, like, racism and, like, view of the outside world, like, xenophobic view is commented on is the view of other countries, like, the, like how Ling is 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 a uh, resident of Xing, and because he doesn't have his like license or whatever, he's immediately thrown in prison because that's how like incredibly xenophobic the Amestrians are. Is just they would go to those absolutely extreme lengths to do something like that. Um. And um, and also the way that it, that that Amestris in general is portrayed as having a ton of enemies, because Amestris itself is an extremely like once again showing how how the homunculi how the homunculi influence the country. Like Amestris is a very prideful country, and it tends to take out its wrath on like. Its enemies, essentially, which is like two very large elements of the seven deadly, uh, of the seven homunculi. Um, the second of these themes, I think, I've determined is definitely like 
no compromising on, on your ideals. And when I mean this, I mean that specifically, like, there are so many characters' actions, specifically like Alphonse and Edward and um, Mustang, where, like, they, they have certain motives that they hold up, and especially Edward, like, refuse to break no matter, like, what the goal is. Like, for example, take Alphonse. Um, the entire show, his goal is about getting his body back. But he refuses to do that through, like, unfaithful means, and, like, Edward refuses to kill people. And he always prefers to take mercy on opponents and understand where they came from and attempt to redeem them. And, um, and, and, and like, how he and Alphonse absolutely swear by to never use a philosopher's stone because of the fact that philosopher's stone is made of human sacrifices and they stick to that ideal the entire show and how and how the the complete opposite of that mustang uh can sometimes be very morally compromising in order to achieve his goals and ambitions, which, which like, provides this, like, fascinating spectrum and even contributes to, like, this somewhat animosity that, that the characters feel against each other. It's this very, like, reverse dark side, light side type relationship. And probably not a great way to describe it, but, like, you get what I mean. Um... And it's just perfectly tackled and portrayed. And then, and then the largest of these themes is loyalty. And the general concept of loyalty and its many nuances. At the, at the smallest level, it, it goes down to like between character to character relationships and loyalty and bonds to one another. And what one character is willing to do out of loyalty and respect for another. Specifically, like, for a great example of this, I'm talking about the relationship between Hawkeye or Ross or Breda and Mustang. But specifically Hawkeye, because the, their relationship is closer and much more explored throughout the show. Um, versus, to, to, to a slightly larger scale where... Um, people who used to have faith in their country suddenly, like, begin to question themselves and, and their loyalty to their country and, 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 the, and, the, and their, like, um, faith in the Fuhrer as a leader, essentially. Um, to, to honestly, the largest scale of loyalty, which is, like, um, this idea that, um, how, like, what, like, loyalty to a country, which I've, I've kind of referenced, is explored in the first episode masterfully with the villain built up, um, and, and just the way that's tackled as, like, loyalty to a country and to, I, and, and then there's an even bigger scale, which is, like, um, which kind of intertwines with the theme I just talked about, which is like loyalty to an ideal, and are you will and and what is the amount of loyalty that you have to that particular ideal specifically, and how loyal are you to it that you would be willing to stick to it? Um. And I think that about wraps up my thoughts, honestly. Um, in conclusion, everything about this show is basically perfect. I mean, the music, the themes, the characters, the villains, the action, the pacing. Everything was, like, absolute perfect, masterful quality, top-notch, out, out of the fucking universe. And 
it absolutely deserves every single piece of praise that has ever been given to it because it is literally goddamn good. And and this isn't even a case of where I would I would recommend this to like new anime watchers like myself. I would recommend this to anyone that appreciates the value of good animation, period. Because this is just like one of the best pieces of animated fiction I've ever seen. Simple as that. I mean, like, just making this video has honestly made me realize I love it even more than I thought I did. Just thinking about it and just talking about it. Um... And I would recommend this to anyone that is into, like, like cartoons that generally have, like, profound themes, like Avatar The Last Airbender, The Clone Wars, or even, or even like, like, other ones I haven't seen, like, Arcane, possibly, like, I don't know. But, like, I, I would recommend this so incredibly highly, because it's just, it literally is, it, it is on a, completely transcendent level for me. Like, absolutely transcendent level along with Breaking Bad and Attack on Titan in terms of TV shows for me. And it is absolutely one of my new favorite works of fiction of all time. Um, easily, I think. Um, if you manage to make it all the way through this very long video, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all later, and watch for my Alchemist Brotherhood. Bye!